Hi, this is Ian Buckley with MakeUseOf.com, and today we're taking a look at PhotoP. Um, if you're on the move, if you're using Photoshop a lot, but maybe you're not using your own computer, uh, or you're meeting a client, there could be multiple reasons you might need to edit a Photoshop file in a hurry. And this is where PhotoP comes in. So uh, let's open a file from my computer to begin with. Um, of course, you could open this from a USB stick or anything. Uh, I'm going to open this Photoshop file for fictional barbershop chops. And uh, let's say I'm designing this logo for a client and they want to make a few changes right at the last minute. It doesn't matter where I am, it doesn't matter what computer I'm on, I can do some basic changes here. So um, as you can see, for example, we have layers here. So if you wanted to switch to another layer for a different logo that you thought might work, that uh, obviously works. Um, and much like Photoshop, if you do decide to make some changes, let's say the client decided they wanted this to be much smaller, uh, you can do that. Um, so let's we put it there, we show it to the client and they say, oh no, actually, I don't particularly like that. Much like Photoshop, you can use keyboard commands like Control, Alt and Z to take a step backwards. While PhotoP is not as fully functional as Photoshop, it still does a pretty good job. And let's face it, we wouldn't expect it to be as functional as Photoshop. This is something to use when you don't have access to your main computer and you don't have access to the Adobe suite. So uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, you can manipulate layers and uh, the toolbar down the side will be very familiar to almost anyone that has used Photoshop before. And uh, for all your basic image manipulation needs, you should find there's everything here that you would need. However, there is one thing to bear in mind when it comes to text manipulation. When you do uh, add text here, uh, you'll notice that it, it loads in its uh, deja vu sans, that is its uh, default text. And uh, you'll see quite a different array of fonts in here to your usual Photoshop file. So you might find that if you load something in with text that you'll have a, an issue because the font will be different. There is, however, an easy way around this. Uh, if you just make sure that you have the font that you're using to hand, maybe load a copy of it onto your USB stick, you can simply say file and open. And if you open the font, it will add it to the fonts in this particular project. Another useful feature of PhotoP is that you can move images directly from your Google Drive into PhotoP, meaning that you could technically not have any hardware with you whatsoever and log onto any computer to manipulate images. So for example, I have in a Google Drive here um, an image I have from a tutorial. Um, and I realized that I don't really like this line here and I'd quite like to change the sizes of this and maybe put a nice background color on it. So uh, there's all the suggested things you can open it with. And if you uh, select connect more apps, and then search for PhotoP. You'll find that you can connect it to your Google Drive account. And now once that's there, you just select open with PhotoP and it will open in the editor. And here we are back in PhotoP. So um, as I mentioned, I felt like this just needed something else. And I think what it needs is a nice blue background. So great, I think this is done now. Uh, something to bear in mind, the first time you uh, click on a file in your Google Drive to go to PhotoP, you need to have your pop-up blocker off because it will give you a pop-up asking uh, permission for PhotoP to connect to your Google Drive account. Once you've given it that permission, you'll be presented with your image. Another important thing to realize is that when you save this, save to Google Drive, it will overwrite your original image. So if you want to have uh, the image and then a new image, I would make a copy of it on your Google Drive first, because if you go to the drive here, you will see that the background has updated and the original file is gone. PhotoP is good at what it does. Uh, in the style of Photoshop, and indeed anyone that uses Photoshop will find it very intuitive to use, it doesn't quite pack the same punch and the same features, but what would you expect? This is a web app, it's not going to have the same amount of features, and what it does, it does very well. So I hope this video introduction has been useful to you. Um, if you'd like to read the article that goes alongside it, there is an article on the main Make Use of website that will be linked in the description. But for now, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Every week we have uh, tech tips, we have giveaways, and we have reviews. But for now, thank you all so much for watching.